Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Social Media Breakfast. My name is Corey Stamsher. I'm with Region 9 Falcon Christian, one of the sponsors for Social Media Breakfast. Wes Otto um, and Mike Sargent from Auto Media Group are also sponsors. They are the ones that brought the donuts, so don't forget to go get those. They look really good. And then also we have Yvonne from the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship who provides this beautiful space. So I'm not going to introduce our speaker. I'll let her do that. But join me in welcoming Samantha Feltz. Hi, everyone. Um, I don't know if you can hear me through the mic. I talk pretty loud, so we should be fine. Um, but yeah, so my name's Samantha Felt. Um, I'm originally from Redwood Falls, Minnesota. I'm a Redwood Valley alumni. Um, I graduated from NDSU with a strategic communication degree and a minor in business. Um, right when I was in the middle of my um, co college academic career at NDSU, <coughs> they took the PR and advertising degree and decided to slap a new name on it. So that's basically what that means. And then I minored in business with an emphasis in marketing. Um, I've worked a lot of jobs through many different industries. I had a really, I have a really hard time like deciding things, so I just wanted to try everything. So I had three, about three jobs consistently throughout um, college. I worked for um, a resort in Detroit Lakes as an events intern. I worked at the NDSU Wellness Center for social media. Um, I worked at a local bank, community bank in Fargo as a communication specialist. I was a social media manager for Farmers Union Industries, which is located kind of all throughout Minnesota and South Dakota, but their main office is in Redwood. Um, currently, I'm the Parks and Rec Operation Coordinator. It's a fancy name. <laughs> I do the youth recreation, I teach group fitness, I work with fitness memberships, and then I do all the marketing and social media for the Parks and Rec Department. Um, I also am the communication manager for Redwood Valley Schools. They kind of brought me in. They I'm pretty sure they just wanted someone young to do that job. They just figured, let's just slap it onto her. So <laughs> that's what I do. I do their Facebook, their website, um, any type of print media that they have. Um, I also work for Redwood Valley Tech Solutions as a social and interactive media manager. I do a lot of social media videos for her, creating them, um, as well as some other social media content. And then I volunteer as a speech and a softball coach. So. I'm very busy. Um, I don't have a lot of downtime, and when I do, I spend it with my puppy and my fiance. Um, little other facts about me: I just got engaged in April, so you might see some wedding stuff here because that's one industry that has blown my mind away. Um, if you ever want to like get in an up-and-coming industry, that's the industry to go to. And then you'll see a lot of stuff about my dog. I am a true millennial. I love my pet like it's my child. So you'll see a lot of stuff about that. I have a doodle named Augie Doggy. Um, we have a great time. And then I just bought a house this April too. So it is true, millennials are starting to buy houses. We are starting to settle down because we're at that age where we're starting to have kids. Um, I'll go through some, some statistics later, but it's true. I don't have a ton of credibility for this, for this presentation, except for I was born in 1993. I am a millennial, I'm living proof. So. That's my main credibility. Um, I'm really excited about this topic. I've always been or in, interested in like the different generational um, divides and how they work together. So, with that being said, there's a lot of misconceptions about millennials. Some of these are kind of true. Some of these aren't. Um, here's a good video just kind of going through that. As a millennial, I'm part of the most advanced crop of humans that our species has ever As a millennial, I'm part of the most advanced crop of humans that our species has ever seen. Oh, man. Yes. Okay. That's why it's not working. Yeah. It won't work anymore. As a millennial, I'm part of the most advanced... Nice to see a millennial have some As a millennial, I'm part of the most advanced crop of humans that our species has ever seen. I'm not a Gen Z. 
I love to go out and meet up with friends so we can all sit together looking down at our phones and message other friends who aren't there with us. I like my friends' online personas better than their in-person personas, so I don't associate with them in person anymore. And I can say with confidence, I have literally never held eye contact with anyone. How old am I? I'm 55. According to my birth date, I'm 33, but as a millennial, I don't identify with that age. And it's discrimination to think that I'm as old as my age. Now I'm 65, which means I should qualify to get social security checks every month now. When I order something off Amazon, it pisses me off that it takes until the next day for it to arrive. I mean, what kind of the BS is that, that I have to wait almost 24 hours to get my new cold brew coffee maker. One time I started a petition against Amazon. Then I got tired of all the work it entailed before I sent it out to anyone. But still, when I was a kid, I always won the gold medal on the school's track team. I was only the 18th fastest kid, but I always won the gold medal. So did everyone else on the team and the opposing team, because we were all the best. What that taught me is that hard work and determination are severe forms of abuse. I learned that I don't need to put effort into being great at something because I can just have people tell me that I'm great at that something instead. I'm great at everything I do. It also taught me that me and my family can file a lawsuit against anyone who doesn't give me a gold medal. I have 87 voicemails that I haven't checked and I won't because I'm appalled when people call me without texting me first to see if they can call me. It's so inconsiderate. Sorry for the interruption. I just thought the world was probably wanting an update about how my diarrhea is doing. Someone spiked my lunch with gluten yesterday. What? I can't focus. It's a condition, which means it's not my fault. Because I'm a millennial, I care enough to deliberately come across like I don't care at all. That's how much I don't care but a little reassurance that that's a good thing would be nice. In the professional world, whenever I've had a manager, I've tried to schedule meetings with them for every 45 minutes so that they can go over my work and reassure me that I'm doing a good job. When they point out how my work can be improved, I get upset. I mean, some have even had the nerve to say that I can't take criticism. I'm not gonna listen to what those haters have to say. Haters gonna hate. I just need to work for myself. I need the freedom to be in control of my schedule and to do things my way. And the fact that I think self-responsibility is a form of cruelty and that I know exactly how to not know how to follow through on anything means there's a high probability that I'll be successful working for myself. Awkward. I love using one word retorts instead of stringing together an actual sentence comprised of coherent thoughts. I also feel like they help show my huge depth of character. My dating life is on point. I have no problem getting the courage to ask a woman out on Tinder. And there's no question that the best way to create a deep, heartfelt connection with someone is to connect to their online dating profile while I'm hiding behind a keyboard. As a millennial, I like to do a little microdosing and talk about the future of VR. I'm so engaged in this reality that I've basically conquered it all. I mean, I have seen almost every episode of every reality TV show, so there's nothing left for me to experience in this reality. So I need virtual reality to bring me my next conquest. I've also progressed my linguistic abilities to the point that now I mostly don't say actual words. I just say letters that stand for words. LOL, LMFAO, WTF, OMG, OMFG, OMMFG, OMMFGD. It's a form of spelling that doesn't require any knowledge in knowing how to read. And it suggests that I put so little effort into saying what I'm saying, that I don't even say the words that I'm saying. I just say the letters that say the words that I'm not saying. It's like an intelligent form of illiteracy. I'd like to thank my helicopter parents for always keeping me in a safe nest free of any challenges. Because just like baby birds, you'll never find your wings if you're pushed out of the nest. Never leaving the nest of comfort, that's what gives you the strongest wings. As a millennial, I just want to make an impact on this world.
So obviously there's some misconceptions. He's very extremist millennial, but that some of that's true and I'll admit it too. So, so who are millennials? So they're born between 1981 and 1996. Um, that's always skewed to kind of depends where you're looking at that fact. But they're typically age 23 to 38. I am not talking about your high school students or your, even your early college students. These are people that are pretty much out of college and in the buying power. They're using their money, they're out in the world. They've got jobs. I'm not talking about Gen Z high school students. I just wanna make that clear because they're a different breed and I will defend that all day long. Um, they make up 25% of the US population. I actually just read that we have now surpassed baby boomers and we are the largest generation in the population. Think about that, 25%. So we make up 21% of the consumer discretionary purchases. That's over a trillion dollars in direct buying power. That stat alone should make you interested in this topic. Over a trillion dollars spent, and we are in the age of spending, we're buying things. We just got out of college, we have jobs, we have incomes, we're ready to buy. One in four are parents today. So if you have something that um, markets to families, parents, that's who you want to market, is the millennials. 46 reported having over 200 Facebook friends compared to the 19% non-millennials. So Facebook is where we're at. We already knew that. We're also at a lot of other things too. But we do have that sense of this is where our friends are at. This is how we stay in touch. Um, 2.5 times faster to adapt to new technology. I'm obviously not a very good example of that. But <laughs> known as 46% post original content. So taking our original content. We don't always share everything. We don't copy and paste from the internet. We want the real thing in front of us. 80% want brands to entertain them. And we'll talk about that stat later. 40% uh, want to participate in co-creation of product and brands. Again, we'll talk about that later. That's an important one. And 70% 70 70 feel a responsibility to share feedback about their experience. These are all really important statistics. These are the proof of what I'm going to show you in the next trends. So what's your typical millennial? Obviously, I'm generalizing this. I'm sure you can find plenty of millennials that don't fit this cookie cutter image. But they might have some qualities. I, a good example is my fiance always claims he's not a millennial. Never will be, never has been. Yeah, he, he's 24 years old, like, <laughs> true to the stats. But he, he says, I'm not a millennial, I don't think like that. Yet every night before bed, he spends a good 20 minutes on his phone on social media, watching Facebook videos. I'm kind of like, eh, yeah, you're a millennial, whether you like it or not. <laughs> um, so that brings up number one, we're really digital savvy. Anything you can put onto our phones as an app, we love it. We spend hours and hours on our phone. I was just talking to Corey, it's really kind of disappointing that they put your screen time, that you can see that now, because nobody wants to know that you just spent five hours on your phone today. Um, we can pick up new technology really quickly, and we're always searching for the latest technology. I just found online, so I, I got this Apple Watch right when it came out. I thought it was the coolest thing. This is like a generation one Apple Watch. I thought it was the coolest thing. Well, now they have glasses. They have like glasses that you can like schedule your appointments with. You just talk to your glasses. Like crap, now I gotta go get some glasses. Like I don't even wear glasses. <laughs> but I want them because they're new, it's innovative. Um, we like new technology. Num or we'll go over to convenient connection. So we want to experience something without actually leaving our home. Um, this, that statement kind of reminds me of the video. But we like video chats. Uh, we like you know streaming stuff on social media. We can join those live videos. We can join the Instagram T line. Instagram TV launch. Um, we want everything at our fingertips. Like I said before, if you've got an app for it, perfect. I can just get it right from my phone. Um, and we want those all in one products. So there's a reason why, you know, smart homes become huge lately. Those Alexis or Alexas and um, iHomes and all those different technology pieces, they're all in one. I can put my calendar, I can watch YouTube videos, I can control my lighting, grocery lists, all on a screen. We love that, it's convenient. Um, I love this one, we have a good BS detector. So I'll admit it, 
Millennials have huge trust issues. We do not trust it easily. Uh, we want to know why we would have to pick up the phone, or we want we want to know why we would pick up the phone to an unknown number when we know it's just going to be a telemarketer. That's where our trust issues come from. Is we've been scammed. We watch our parents get scammed like for years and years. So we have a really good BS detector. Uh, we want things that are authentic, that are real. That's why video is taking off, because we don't want those edited pictures. You know, We want the real thing. And the last one, health environment and helping the greater good. So have you ever noticed how many more gym options there are now? Like we have gyms that are just for cycling or just for yoga. It's crazy. 10 years ago, five years ago maybe, you wouldn't have seen that. Uh, when I was in school at Fargo, you had your, your typical you know, community gym. Well, by the end of my time at school, there was a cycling bar, three yoga studios, a bar bar. <laughs> like, there's crazy amount, and that's because of the millennials. We care about our health and fitness. We watch our parents smoke and drink and do all these unhealthy things, and they still might be doing them, but we don't want to end up like that. We want to care about our health and our wellness. Um, and helping the greater good. So we really, and we'll talk about this later too, but we really do care about the environment. We care about um, preserving it and you know sharing it with the world. And it's really funny, because I said I were tech savvy, right? So we'll go to these beautiful state parks and we'll do all these beautiful things in the nature and in the wilderness, but we have to take a picture of it. We have to share it. So it's funny that I say authentic and like that's what we want, but we still want to share that authenticity. Um, so when I first gave this presentation, I wanted to see like actual stats from like people I knew. So I put a survey monkey out on Facebook and I wanted to see, you know, what are millennials spending time on? So I pulled the data just from the millennial age group. And it's what which social network do you spend the most time on? No surprise there, Instagram. If you want to target millennials, if your product or service fits the millennial persona, you need to be on Instagram. If you want to target Gen Z, move on over to Snapchat. But we're still on Instagram. We are loving every single update that they give us. And obviously Facebook is also a great, um, great resource. Twitter, um, kind of a hit or miss if you have a good news piece or if you're very news content heavy, Twitter's a great way. Like, I don't, sorry, Gen or baby boomers, but I don't really read the newspaper. I go straight to Twitter if I hear about news. I literally search for news on Twitter. So something to think about. Um, and then select the social media networks you follow companies or brands on. So this is where Facebook takes the lead on this one. Um, I think that's, in my opinion, that's mostly in part due to the ads that generate off Facebook. They're so um, clean and you can swipe and shop right on there. Not saying that Instagram doesn't have that too, but it's just more clear. So I think when, you, when you're targeted on Facebook through an ad, it's really easy to just like that clothing store or like that service. Uh, how many hours a day do you spend on social media? I think people lied about this. I think it would really be three to five hours. Um, but they said one to two, but that's still an hour to two hours that you could be targeting your potential customer. That's, and it's just by maybe putting an ad on social media, because they're on there for a good two hours, you're bound to get them if you put a little you know, uh, marketing strategy into it. So I have, well, I think, six or seven trends um, that we need to talk about when it comes to millennials. And, what strategically we can do to target this age group, to target maybe not even this age group, but this generation. So like you might be a baby boomer, but have millennial trends, That's we're still gonna target you. So the first one, around 69% of millennials experience the phenomenon FOMO. And according to Strategy Online, 60% of millennials make reactive purchases because of FOMO. In other words, they'll buy something just because they feel like they're going to miss out. FOMO, the fear of missing out. This has become just huge. Like, anytime you post available for a limited time, you bet there's a millennial out there setting their alarm, setting a reminder, hey, i got to take advantage of this sale or this deal before it ends. Um, contest sweeps live video, countdowns, sneak peeks. I love sneak peeks. 
whenever you put like a little sneak peek of a new product launch or you know some new piece of equipment coming um we love that because we're going to check back there's like multiple accounts online where they do a sneak peek and i'm like oh yeah i gotta remember they released their new fall stuff or something like that um and then finding new alternatives to traditional ads so any way you can spice something up marketing is basically trial and error a ton of different times especially with millennials because we are always looking for that new and upcoming thing so you do have to do a lot of trial and error great thing about it you can delete it it's not going to hurt to delete an ad but i um pulled a couple different ads that popped up on my own timeline but this first one shop dog in sioux falls um, they had a code valentine for 20 percent off of course, I set my, you know, like reminder that night, make sure you go on Shop Dog, because this is a great deal. And it was just on their Instagram story. But it was a one-time thing. It was only Valentine's Day. So I felt like if I did not do it on Valentine's Day, I would miss out on that sale. Realistically, they probably have another 20% off. But um, another way, so right here, Target. This isn't Target, but it's a blogger for Target. Um, and they just sent her like a cute little gift and then she got a like advertise it on her Instagram page um, and then they just said new loyalty program launching October 6th which just came out is, is awesome um, but that's like something that's like leading up we're looking forward to October 6th we're gonna check back on October 6th and then this other one um, I'm actually going to this I just bought tickets because of this ad um, this is an ad on my Facebook it's forever bride it's an expo in the cities, and it says use code for engage for 80% off. Well, little me was like, oh my god, I have to do this right now. Like, that 80% off, that's crazy. And they've done it for like weeks now, so I'm like, I could have easily waited. But that's what millennials do. We have to jump on it or we're going to miss out. So FOMO, the fear of missing out. Um, the next trend, so 70% of millennial consumers are influenced by recommendations of their peers in buying decisions. This goes back to that stat I told you about reviews. We feel obligated to give a review about a product or service. Or experience, too, if you're staying somewhere. Um, so trend number two is a brand ambassador. So hearing from people we trust or idolize. So there's a difference between like little old me posting about something I got at Target versus that Target girl who, who's posting about Target. She is a brand ambassador. So what they are, they're hired by the organization to promote their products on social media. This doesn't need to be a celebrity. This can be just your, one of your very, very devoted customers who has a good online social media following. Um, they do product reviews honest product reviews like we're not looking for someone just that says I love I love I love no we're looking for someone that gives us honest product reviews and hopefully a lot of them are good um, personalized discounts hashtag ad because we want the honesty um, tagging brands in the post I really like this one separate Facebook or Instagram stories dedicated to the product so I follow a lot of bloggers and a lot of those people are brand ambassadors for different brands and they'll have like separate um, saved Instagram stories on their profile that I can go and I can look through products that they're brand investors for. And then word of mouth. So word of mouth has totally changed. It's not me telling you guys directly, hey, I went to this um, convention and I loved it. The place was beautiful. No, it's me, hey, posting about it on social media. Or I'm tagging a friend in something I think they would like. Or you share and tag or you comment somebody's name and something. I do that all the time with my fiance. I'm like, hey, you wanna buy this? Go for it. Like, comment right, right on the post. It works like a charm. So that's the new word of mouth. It's a digital word of mouth. So some examples, I told you you see a lot of doodles today. This actually looks a lot like my puppy. But, <laughs> so they went, they went through and they tagged it all. They tagged everything. Obviously, I don't care that much about these ones, but I care about that one. That's where they got the cute bandana, and that's where I wanna see it. Um, also, paint in 10 for 10% 10 off. That is a personalized discount. Those are so good. You can directly see how well your brand ambassador is doing by how many times that discount comes through. Um, up in the left-hand corner, those are three former gopher volleyball players. I'm a huge fan of gopher volleyball. Um, they don't play anymore, but of course I still follow them on social media. And now they work for Adidas and they're brand ambassadors. So what do I do? 
Now I love Adidas. I love their shoes because honestly, I was triggered in through these girls. And I love it because they're, they're going through product launches. They tell me when the new lines come out. Um, but I don't go through Adidas. I go through the brand ambassadors. But it's a win-win situation, actually. Um, and then in the bottom, so if you know what Gymshark is, it's an athletic clothing line. Um, they started off with this girl, Whitney Simmons. She was a brand ambassador, right? So she just had her personalized discount code. Um, she posted a lot of, like, she would buy their products. They might have just sent her products. And she'd, she'd like, try them on and review them. Well, now they give her her own line. It's the Whitney Simmons line. It's a whole line dedicated to her. And it has blown up. Obviously, this is kind of an extreme measure for like the bigger companies, but it's a great example of something new, something creative. Um, and she has her own makeup line now. Like, it's crazy. And she just started off as a girl who posted about her fitness. Jim Sharp picked her up, said, hey, you want to wear our clothing? And now she has her own line. So brand ambassadors. If you have someone that you can think of that would be great at this, maybe start that. Give it a trial. Um, this is just a, some more stats. So the power of online reviews. So 7 in 10 US consumers seek out reviews or opinions before purchasing. So I had a stat back here. Um, we spend up to 25 hours online each week. I could pretty much admit that a good half of that is like looking up products and reviewing them. Because I won't buy a product unless I've searched at least three review sites. Or like I've seen you know, reviews from the actual um, place that I would buy it from or from Amazon or from Yelp. Like we have to review it. A good example is, so my fiance was buying an auger, a fish auger, ice fishing auger. And I was like, okay, have you bought it yet? Have you bought it yet? And he's like, no, I can't decide. And little did I know, he had spent hours and weeks and days just watching YouTube videos, reviewing augers over and over again. At one point I was like, this has got to stop. Like I can't listen to one more old guy talk about his auger. Like I can't do it. And of course they're not like fancy videos. They're just they're honest videos telling me, showing me how the auger works. Got real annoying, but he finally decided on one. But he had to go through, especially a big purchase like that. Especially big purchases. Cars, we're not gonna make that decision in a day. You better believe we're gonna come back like three times. And that's just the way millennials shop. 81% um, are categorized, 81% uh, of these are categorized as millennials. 57 are suspicious of businesses with only positive reviews. That's a big one. Um, I'm, when you scroll through a review section on Amazon or anywhere, I'm not gonna lie, I look for the bad review. I, I, I get the five stars, I'm sure they have a great justification of why it's five stars, but why is it getting two stars? So we look for the bad review, because maybe it was just a personal opinion. Let's hope it's just a personal opinion. 54% uh, will not try a recommended, will try a recommended product or service with a bad review. 174 is the average amount millennials spend per month on eating out. So if you have a business where there's food involved. We don't like to cook very much unless it's like a package delivered to us with full instructions like um, Blue Apron or something like that. Um, so if you have a food business, target those millennials. 87% of millennials will splurge on a nice meal out, even if money is tight. This one just makes me laugh, because it's like, we could be poor, right out of college, like don't know what to do with our lives, but we will not miss out on that, that family dinner with all of our friends. Okay, we won't. We have to participate. We have a fear of missing out. We will not miss out on that meal, because something cool will happen, and we'll still splurge it, and we'll have 18 bucks in our bank account, but it's fine. I got that experience because we're more into the experience. All right, the next one. Video streaming represents 74% of internet traffic. Holy moly, 74%. If this doesn't tell you that video needs to be a part of your social media strategy, I don't know what will. And I know you guys have heard it multiple times. Video, 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 video. You need video. It's true. Longer, stick around for the videos where you're just holding it in front of your face, walking around bad lighting, bad content. I'm not saying you have to hire a huge media program. That's not what I'm asking. I'm saying maybe set it up, make sure there's some good lighting, good sound, make sure there's not a lot of background sound, and then give us your video. 
because we're more likely to stick around for the whole video than watch the first five seconds and leave. Um, so another good key about that is we watched a lot of crappy infomercials growing up, so we, we want something authentic, something good. Um, so it must entertain us or inspire us. How-to products and reviews, um, those are big, like I said before. If there, you ever have a new product and people are hesitant, remember, we don't like getting out of our house and going and actually seeing it. Show us a video of it. Show us how it works. Um, event streaming, that's huge too. I love that we're streaming this right now. That's awesome. Because if somebody can't be here, or they're maybe out of town, this is a great way to interact. Um, and it's your, like I said, it's your gateway to an interactive experience. So I have a couple of videos to show you. This first one's just a really simple video. It's really, really simple. It's honestly a slideshow with some music, a little animation. But I wanted to watch the whole thing. This popped up on my Instagram, but I found it on YouTube. right cute catchy music you don't even have to listen to the music there's no words behind it but I had to see what number one was I could not just stop like you can't just stop and not see what number one was I honestly thought it was gonna be Cherry Garcia it has been for years I'm a big ice cream fan but that's what I mean though it's engaging it's entertaining like you have to see what number one is and that's super easy to make I make videos that's one of the easiest ones I've ever seen um, a different example whoops a how-to example this is, so I looked up online, the best how-to product review video, I think it was how-to, and Martha Stewart popped up. I was like, oh, this is the most like viewed how-to video on Facebook, and I was just blown away. Um, I'm not gonna watch the whole thing, but like, she just has a camera props, I mean, it's Martha Stewart, so it's probably a little more um, extreme. Actually, no, I think someone's holding this camera. And it's just like her and a buddy, and it's got a cute little background. Martha Stewart with Kevin Sharkey, your old friend, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Uh, and today we are um, very excited because we have a very interesting uh, bunch of projects for you to decorate your home for the holidays. She literally, it, like, the camera's shaking, which I don't like. But I still want to see like what she's going to do with this decor. I won't watch the whole thing. But she's promoting her product. And then we, like, you get to see Martha Stewart as a live, actual person doing the things she talks about. It's not like it's a staged photo where everything looks perfect. No, that was a handheld camera. And she's just on Facebook Live. And she's like, hey, let me show you some cute decorating tips. Authentic, real, and honest. Can I ask you a question on reviews? Yeah. On what? So on reviews? Yeah. So you mentioned you, you check out reviews. Which What are your most uh, popular places you look for reviews? You mentioned like Yelp. Um, so anytime it's like a service, Yelp is a big one. Um, really, wherever I'm buying the product from, I have to look through all those. And then um, for some of the bigger things, I'll go to the bloggers. So anytime, like, like I'm shopping for a car right now. Um, I'm going to look at all the bloggers and what they say about Minnesota driving and finding the best car in the winter. Um, sometimes with a local store, I would just highly recommend you have a review section where people can maybe post uh, like the outfit or them using the service or something like that so I can see it on a real person rather than a stage event. So if, you, if it is a local store, like I highly recommend having some type of comment section or review section on that product that you're selling online or Instagram. That's another, it's kind of like a review there too. When you go to the, where they tag you in it, that's a good one. Cause then you can see it on real people or see it in action. Um, so the next one, 80% of millennials want brands to entertain them. We are needy. I hate to admit it to you, but we do not settle. We are very needy. <laughs> it's not a quality I love, but it's quality we have. <laughs> Um, so content with meaning and make it personalized. 
So the first one, relevant and diverse content. So if you're going to be using targeted ads, if you're going to be putting in marketing dollars to your strategy, make sure they actually relate to the customers you're targeting. If you don't already have like a persona that you're targeting, and I'm hoping it's one of them's millennial already, you're already set behind. You got to get that persona. You got to know, you know, what would the ideal customer look like to you? And then target them specifically online. Um, have it apply to our lifestyles and interests. So obviously I'm shopping for a honeymoon. Shopping, I'm looking at all these places, and this pops up on my Facebook. Um, it's just like an experience. They offer like a coupon, and it's directly to me. They took my content of searching and all the cookies and everything, and they found me because they're directly targeting my age, engaged, um, whatever other data they found on me. But that's the great part about today's age is we have that data. I just don't think that a lot of, especially small business owners, aren't using it. Like, that's where you're going to directly target us. Um, so, next one. When you're posting, ask yourself this question. Does it teach, share, or engage my audience? So when I say that, teach, am I learning a new skill or about recent news that happens? Am I learning something from this post? Um, share, are you sharing information about your organization or um, a topic that you're promoting or something like that? It might not necessarily be knowledge, but it's just information that we might want to know. And then engage. So do I get to participate somehow? We love participating. We want to be entertained. We want to engage. We want to think that we had something to do with whatever you're trying to sell. So this is a great one. Um, Happy Twins Trivia Tuesday. Correctly answer the um, question below for a chance to win a prize pack. That's great. I can click on that link, enter my answer, and I get to almost win something. Like, that's awesome. I'm engaging. It's a simple question. Um, and then they probably end up sharing it. It's just a way to get easy marketing dollars out of you because people are engaging. They're using it. And then sincere relationship, relationships. So I know that we're in a world of digital and everything seems to be through a screen, which is true. But that doesn't mean you can't go meet the person. You know, put them on your Instagram. They might not be a brand consumer, but you can still use their footage and you can still, or a brand ambassador, but you can still use their footage. And people like that you're personal, that you care about whoever your customers are. Um, comment back. So this is a great example up above. Can't wait for mine to come in the mail from FabFitFun. And they commented back. They said, hey, Lindsay, thanks so much for sharing. We're really excited about it too. We hope you love it. That wasn't a negative comment. She wasn't playing like defense against it. She was just commenting back because it was a great comment. Engaging with them about even the positives is really important. We like to feel special. We're needy. We want that attention. It's, it's sad, but it's true. <laughs> and then listen to them. So say there is a negative comment or a negative review. Comment back. Take into their consideration. If it's something related to your product or service, really take it into consideration because Normally, if one person's thinking it, there's another person thinking it too. So just content with meaning. Like, we don't buy into the traditional ads anymore. I hate to break it to you. We want new, we want engaging, we want to be entertained, and we are needy. <laughs> um, next one. So 90% of consumers rate an immediate response as, is as important at, or very important when they have a customer service question. This one's my new one. Accessibility. And I felt like this was really important to put into the conversation. Because like I said, we are digital savvy. We want everything at our fingertips. Um, I love this thing. Social is the new SEO. Sorry for all the web designers out there. You're still very important. I just think that social is taking a step up. I know for a fact a lot of people go straight to one of their social media apps to search for something. I'm not saying that Google isn't still relevant, but I'm going to go search for a boutique or maybe even like cars.com. I'm going straight to the app. I'm not going to cars.com. I have an app that does that now. Um, social is the new SEO. So are you Instagram worthy? Ask yourself that. Are you worthy? Does your content work with Instagram? Because if it doesn't, I think you need to re-strategize. Because we saw before, 
our number one place we're at is Instagram. So you gotta make sure your content is Instagram worthy. Um, and then where's your initial contact coming from? So are you getting messages for, via Facebook, via Insta? Um, maybe you have Snapchat, that'd be really cool if you got like a lot of comments back on Snapchat. But where is that initial contact coming from? Is it coming from an app? Um, or is it, is it honestly coming from your contact page on your website? Like for me, I probably contact people more through Facebook Messenger or Instagram Messenger or Instagram comments or anything than I do through their contact page on their website. So think about where you're putting your marketing dollars. This is a good strategy. It's not to kind of cut out your website because we obviously want a lot of information still. But where are you putting those dollars so they're most effective? Um, so marketing extends beyond the ad. So great. Initial contact was on Instagram, you found them on, you got them, you hooked them. Well, now what? Where does that link out to? Ah, uh, the website, okay. So, now we wanna care about the website. Um, blogs are super awesome. I said it before, like, I'm a big blog fan. Anytime I can read more extensively about a product or service, I'm gonna do it. Um, I hate seeing, I, this is my number one pet peeve, is when I go to a website, and I click on their news or their blog section, and the last post was like two years ago. I'm like, that's not gonna help me. You know what I do? I exit it out and I find a different service or I find a different product. Because I'm like, then I don't know if anything else is updated. I don't know if those store hours are correct. I don't know, like, keep the content rolling. It does not have to be like a full two-page essay. It can be like a 10-point, like, little snippet of your, about your business. Like here, here's five new things about this winter that you need to know for your house or something like that. It can be super easy. Actually, we like it when it's easy. It's quicker. <laughs> um, and then mobile friendly is no longer an option. You can no longer ha not have your website be mobile friendly. Um, I would say of that 74% internet traffic, I'd say like 65 is coming from our phones or our iPads. That's where it needs to be mobile friendly. Um, a couple examples. So when I say like social is a new SEO, I was in the cities a couple weekends ago and I'm like, oh man, I really want to like go experience something really cool with food. So I searched hashtag Minnesota food. And look at all these beautiful pictures that came up and I can go directly to, go directly to that page and I can see all those wonderful places with this beautiful food. And that's how I searched it. That was my SEO. Are you showing up when they search you? Um, another good one on the bottom left. So this is actually RV Tech Solutions. I really like that when you have websites now, there's a chat box. Not everybody likes chat bots. Um, sometimes they're a nuisance. But it's easy. It's convenient. Um, I just went on one. It was on Mankato Company. I can't remember who now. But they had a chat bot. And it actually sent a text message to whoever owned the business. And then we texted back and forth. It's like, that's awesome. I don't have to re-log into the page or keep my browser open. We just chat very um, over text. And then this one right here is a good example of a blog. Um, this is a little online boutique candle store. And I just loved it because they, they consistently posted blogs. And it was something about something I was interested in, something that would entertain me as a millennial, as a customer of theirs. Um, that's why I stress so much. You have to have your customer persona, who you're targeting. And you might have more than one, but then you have to have more than one strategy. So accessibility, making it um, Instagram worthy. About 50% of millennials will be more willing to make a purchase uh, from a company if their purchase supports a cause. So going back to the beginning when I said we love helping the greater good. Anytime we can help, Help people, we'll do it. It doesn't seem like that sometimes, but we do care about that. Um, so the gift of giving. Sell your purpose, not your product. You can have a mediocre product or service. That's fine. You just slap some PR on that and you'll be good to go. You slap a little good nature on that and people will come. 66% are willing to spend more on a product that gives back. And I'm not talking about like a one-off charitable um, donation. That's great, don't get me wrong, but that's not the smartest marketing strategy. Maybe integrate something that cause, or like that um, supports the like 
daily life. So like every purchase, we're gonna give one dollar to this. Or buy one, we donate one. Um, something that can be ongoing. So I highly recommend partnering, partnering with a charity or a nonprofit organization in your community. It does not have to be like the American Cancer Society. I'm not saying <laughs> that you shouldn't donate to that, but it can be something that can like also benefit a nonprofit in your area. Um, buy one, give one. We'll talk kind of about an example, but anytime you can do that, people love it because they feel like my purchase is helping someone else. It's a little superficial, but in the end, we're still helping everybody. Um, and again, instead of one-off charitable donations, do that every um, every dollar spent will give 10 cents or something like that. And then provide not only on products and sales, but it provides an overall benefit to your community. So I want to know that when I use your service, when I buy your product, I'm still helping the Mankato area or wherever area you're in. I want to know that I'm doing something good through this purchase. If there's a product out there, there's two products, same product, two different companies, and one gives a dollar to a nonprofit, and it might be like five dollars more, I'm still gonna pick that one. Because it, it does something, it's the greater good, we care about that. Um, I have some examples for you. So, um, Ivory Ella is a t-shirt company. I might sell more than t-shirts. But their whole philosophy, the whole reason they started this whole company was to help elephants. Right? Simple idea. I want to help the elephants, the African elephants. Well, they've blown up. They sell their t-shirts everywhere, ton tons of boutiques. And what they do is they really integrate it in their message through social media. They want people to know that when you buy their shirt, you are helping elephants. It's simple, right? But nobody's going to know that if you don't tell us. And if you go on their website, they have tons of blogs about like current situations of the elephants and this doesn't have to be something as big as elephants. Like I said, you can pick a nonprofit in your community and they're gonna love it. They're gonna love that they're gonna get some PR out of it and they're gonna get some help. So Ivriella is my first example. Um, Warby Parker, if you don't know what Warby Parker is, it's a glasses company and they like send you five glasses, you try them on, you pick your favorite and then you send them back and order that favorite. Awesome. Um, so they just started something that like it's a buy one, give one so you buy a pair of their glasses they're going to give a pair to um, lower income areas or you know um, overseas or something like that but they have a whole section on their website just telling this story and sure this is a great way that you can pull content from to post onto your social media you don't have to just post it all on a post on social media have a have a footprint and then work off of that so it's just a blog post and it just tells you exactly what you're doing. It's very honest, lots of information, so you know where it's going, how it's being used. So that's Warby Parker. Um, Tom's, everybody kind of knows Tom's, the shoe company, but they do uh, buy one, give one as well. And what I kind of liked about Tom's is they really put their message out there. They picked a lane and they stuck to it and that's the message they create. So if you don't agree with them, you're kind of losing customers that way. But you also have some very devoted customers. So their message, whether it's, you know, roll in peace or, um, you know, they, they pick a lot of, like, very controversial issues, so you kind of got to pick a side. But, like I said, you're going to get devoted customers then. Those customers who agree with your stance, then they're going to go to you for shoes. They're not going to go to someone else because they know that you're, you agree with them, you line up with their values. So that's Tom's. And my favorite, Love Your Melon, a good Minnesota company. Um, Love Your Melon donates to cancer through every purchase. Um, I, think it's, I think it's children's cancer, I'm not actually positive. But um, they do a really good job of kind of like showing their message and you know, going into the hospital, giving those kids the, and you know, some people might think, well, they should just do it. They don't need to get all this PR from it. But it's like, how would people know if you don't show it? You know, We want people to engage. We want people to buy these hats so that we're giving back to everyone that needs it. So Love Your Melon, if you're ever looking for a good example on you know, how to integrate a nonprofit in or um, really just share your message about like doing stuff for the greater good, 
This is a great example to look at. So giving back, um, integrating some type of nonprofit into your, your strategy. And my last one, so 84% of millennials report that user-generated content has some influence in what they buy. If you only take one trend away from me today, please let it be this one, because this is the most important trend you will ever learn about targeting millennials. This one right here. User-generated content. Let your audience be the star. I love that. Because like I said, we're needy, we like to be entertained, and we like to have, know we have a say in something. So if you're, you're letting us be the star, we get a feature on your social media page maybe. So the problem is we have lots of trust issues, right? I said that before. We do not trust very easily. We like lots of reviews. We do our research. We want blogs. Well, the solution is user-generated content. This is not brand ambassadors. This isn't a celebrity or a super fan posting, this is like my friend or my cousin posting about, a con or posting about a product. I know them, I trust them, I know their style, um, their people around you, people in their community. Um, so a great way to do this is share your followers posts. So this is a great example with Cabela's Golden Hour Smackdown, um, and then they gave them credit. They said quote and photo by A. Hawkins underscore 12. This isn't like pay like they didn't pay him to post this it's free that's why this is the most important one this is free content sure you might have to ask hey hey can we share your photo on most of the time you don't even have to ask we love it anyways but it's free and look at this con like just you would have had to pay a photographer to pay this or to take this photo like that's great that was free i can't get over that enough and we trust it because there's a lot of people that probably know him and that were like hey i saw you on cabela's like Facebook, that was so cool. Um, yeah, it's just, it's great to see our own people, our own little selves out there shared by companies. Um, so something we can take credit for. And then again, we want to say, we want to think we had a part of it. So anytime you can promote interaction through polls, surveys, quizzes, um, we love doing that. We spend a lot of time on our phone. We want something to do on it. And once again, we just want to know we, had, we were part of the process. So if you're ever debating something, go to social media. Find what works, find what people want. They'll tell you, we're not afraid to tell you. Um, samples, so sending out samples and having people say, hey, um, review this product online. I got lotion from some little company or something like that, and they sent a card with, they said, we'll give you 15% off your next purchase if you review this product online. I'm like, okay, done. So I like just shared a little story about it online. Awesome. And then tagging and sharing. So make sure you do give credit where credit is due and you share that content that they're giving you. Um, I can't stress that enough that it's free content. And I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of good photographers out there these days. Take advantage of their, I mean, maybe not like professional photographers, they might charge you for it, but there's a lot of people with such fancy iPhones these days that you can take a great photo. Some examples, um, Starbucks up here, they just took you, people who were buying their cups when they did this promotion, and they, that's what they use as their content for like a good month. It's free. Um, as Seen On Me, this is a website and they actually have a part of their website dedicated to it. So if you're doing hashtag As Seen On Me, these are real people wearing the clothes. I can see it. I don't have to wonder, okay, I'm not 6'2 in a size 2. What is that going to look like on me? No, it's a real person. Not that you guys are all really skinny too, but... <laughs> It's still real people, and you can see like, oh, that fits a little differently on somebody taller or shorter. Um, and then Airbnb is my favorite example of user-generated content, because I don't think they've ever put out like their own content. I'm pretty sure they just share all these amazing pictures that they get from people traveling everywhere. So user-generated content is an awesome way. You can use it almost over every single social media platform. So it's something to consider to put into your your plat or your strategy. So in review, um, number one, fear of missing out. Put a deadline on it. Put a sneak peek out there. Um, we don't want to miss out on it. Two, brand ambassadors. If you have someone in your company already that is great resource, that is like your super fan, use them. Reach out to them. Uh, three, video. That's pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure it's good content. 
for content with meaning and it's personalized. We're needy. We need to feel special. Make sure you use that data that you're collecting. Five, accessibility. So if you can create an app, create a shortcut on social media, any type of new technology um, that makes it more accessible to reach your content. Because remember, SEO is the, or social media is the new SEO. Six, gift of giving. This is kind of something you gotta take a little more time to think about, um, to integrate into your marketing strategy, but I can guarantee it will pay off in the long run. And then the most important one, user-generated content. Get that free content from your customers that are posting it anyways, and then show that a real person is using your product or service. And that is all I have for you today. Do we have any questions out there? I know I talked about a lot, and I talk really fast, so.